Okay, I say thank you for joining us. Uh, so my name's Simon for Varg and I'm joined by Simon Davidson, uh, one of our uh, senior project managers. And the plan for today is to look at report design uh, techniques in Sage 200. Uh, There's going to be some training on some of the key areas we find that come up through support calls and the like areas around uh, uh, sort of email settings and so on. But uh, we'll come to that. Just very quickly, experience, many of you will know us from uh, dealing with us through uh, products and such that we supply and work with your, um, yourselves on. And so we drive business efficiencies through digital transformation. And the way we achieve that is through our four key pillars. If you could go to the next slide, Simon, please. So there's four main pillars that our business concentrates on. Um, some of you might deal with us on one of these or possibly two of these, but as I say, there's four key areas. Uh, ERP, which is kind of where we're concentrating today with the Sage 200 report designer. CRM, there's a CRM module within Sage 200. Some of you may or may not use that. Uh, cloud and managed IT. And that's what we see as uh, digital transformation. It's combining these sort of pillars together, maybe two, maybe three, maybe all of those to give you a, a total solution that uh, transforms your business, allows you to work productively, effectively, and so on. And so if we hand over to the next slide, um, Simon's going to cover these the key areas on the training today. As I say, it's all about the Sage and the Report Designer, uh, and I will hand over to Simon. One thing I'll mention, if we can, any questions, if you could pop those up in the chat box, and we'll get to those at the end, if that's okay. So just fire up any questions that spring to mind throughout the session, and we'll cover all of those at the end of the session, if that's all right. And without further ado, I'll hand over to Simon. Thank you very much. Um, can you, everyone hear me okay? Can you hear me, Simon? I can hear you fine, yeah. Perfectly. Fantastic. I wasn't too sure there. I thought I was by myself. <laughs> That's okay. Right. So thanks for everyone spending a bit of time out uh, from your day to uh, spend some time with us. So we're going to cover three main areas in Sage 200 uh, today. So we're going to look at configuring email settings, data letters, and report field formatting. So this is around report designer techniques. Now, we offer additional training, obviously, in report designers, so that can take place normally over one or two days. So what we're presenting today is a very, very, very cut down uh, version. Uh, we're, just get, we're just focusing on these three key areas because these things typically come up in support calls and um, how do I do type uh, questions. So report designer techniques, yeah, how do I email documents? They could be letters, they could be invoices, credit notes and so forth so emailing is very much more uh, a topic um, which is more relevant today given the environment that we're unfortunately uh, facing at the moment so going down to the post office is a bit more logistically challenging these days so emailing is you know the best way to go so how do i email documents we're going to show you the, pro the processes involved uh, we'll start off with the, the basics and we'll get you to a stage that you're going to feel comfortable going into your system and setting up the email settings. We'll also, the second part is going to go and cover off data letters. We're actually going to run through how to produce data letters. And they're basically around chasing up debt. So it's very much um, a relevant topic, again, for the current environment, because obviously people are going to take a little bit longer to pay, understandably. And thirdly, as I said before, we're going to look at some field formatting. So how do I edit my data letters? How do I change some content uh, just to tweak things around a little bit? So let's um, crack on. Now, first of all, before we actually get into what I call under the bonnet, we're going to need some information from your IT to work out uh, what are your email settings? Because, you know, do you use Outlook? Uh, do you send... Uh, emails or want to send emails straight out um, bypassing Outlook itself. Now, typically we find that clients in general use Outlook uh, to send emails because after all, that's what typically Sage supports. So we're going to look at that. Um, so you need to have a chat to your IT, but we'll also cover off how you do this in Report Designer. Now, Report Designer, I'm not too sure how familiar you are, but we'll, we'll cover off the basics. Report design is used to edit your documents. And a document could be a invoice, it could be a statement, a data letter, and so forth. Report design is used for all of those um, types of documents. 
Now, when configuring email settings, you've got to configure each report. So the key point there is each report, because you just can't set up one and then expect all of the others to, to work as, as required. So you need to be familiar, obviously, how, where to find your reports, where do you go in Sage, where do you go on your Sage server to find the individual reports you need to, to edit. We're going to cover off um, how to find this location, where to find your reports and letters and layouts. And we're going to cover off where to find that information. So you can actually avoid having to go through your IT because obviously they'll have a lot on the, on the go at the moment. So you can actually find that out yourself, especially if you're a Sage system administrator. Now, if you are a Sage system administrator, you can find out the name of your Sage 200 server just simply by loading up Sage 200 system administration. So I'll actually show you what that looks like. Sorry, I'll just go back a couple of slides here. And let's just go back to, oops, here we go. So how do I um, find out my name in my Sage server? So let's actually open up Sage 200 administration. You'll have a shortcut if you're a Sage 200 administrator, you'll have a shortcut on your desktop like this. Just double click on that. That'll just take a few moments to start. And we're going to find the name of our server. So click on the company's uh, option on the left hand side and have a look at the server name. The server name will be the first part just before the uh, forward um, backslash. And in my case, it's a demo system. It's got a very odd sort of name, but that's my name, my Sage server. So it's starting with Win, and it finishes with CN. So that's the name of the Sage server there. Now, if you do want to double click on this, it will open up the properties for your company, Sage company, and you can actually copy the name of your server from here. Okay. Don't change anything on the screen because it may stop your Sage from working, but just copy this first part to clipboard. So right click and copy. And it's useful just to fire up a notepad. Uh, every uh, Windows type system will actually have a notepad uh, installed and just paste the name of your server on into the notepad. We're gonna use that later on to, uh, uh, to browse for the files. Okay, so let's close this uh, properties window down. So, so far we've actually achieved one thing. We've actually found out what, what the name of our Sage server is. So let's just flip back to our PowerPoint so we know exactly what we're up to. So we've actually covered off this first part here. What's the Sage server name? Now, before we start looking at um, techniques or how to edit a report, I really need to cover off one important part is where you find that information. Where do you find your reports? Where do you find your letters? And where do you find your layouts? Each site can be set up a little bit differently, but it Sage follows a set routine in terms of how it actually searches for your documents. Now, first of all, the general structure is it will start off looking for the name of the document. It could be an invoice statement, uh, a statement, uh, a letter. It will start off what we call the company location. And if it can't find the name of the document that it's trying to print or email, it will move on to the custom location. Now failing that, it will actually move then to the default location and try and find the document that way. So if you ever find or see a message on the screen along the lines of Sage can't find the document, then the chances are that the document is not actually in one of those three locations. So I'm gonna cover off how you browse for that. And this is where the name of the server comes into play. Because in Windows Explorer, we'll actually need to search for this, the Sage server and we're going to browse to the Sage location and find uh, reports and layouts and letters. 
Now, within those locations, Sage looks for things in certain folders. And if it's a report, it will search for the report within subfolders. And that's what I mean by that segment there. It's broken down by module. So if it's trying to find a nominal ledger report, it will go to the nominal, nominal ledger folder within the reports location and try and find the report that from, from there. Now, just a key point, and this is a key design um, consideration, is that if the name of the report is the same as the standard Sage report or layout, Sage will run your customized version instead of the default. So this technique is what we follow or use if we want to customize, for example, a VAT report, a reconciliation report, or maybe an aged data statement uh, report, and we want it to run in place of the standard default report. Okay, so the key thing is keep the report name the same. If you change it by one character, you know, add a dash or an extra S or a, 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 another word, then that's deemed to be different and Sage will basically not find it. And it will run the standard report. And what I want to mention now is not a lot of sites have the standalone version of Report Designer installed. Uh, typically, when I set up a Sage site, I like to do that. I like to install what I refer to as a standalone version of Report Designer, because that allows you to double click on a, a report or a layout within the Windows Explorer, which I think is now called File Explorer under Windows. And you can double click on it and it will launch up Report Designer from your, your browsing session in, in Windows Explorer. Now, if you don't have the standalone version of Report Designer installed, then don't, don't fret. Contact support, ask them to give you a hand. And Basically, to report to install report designer standalone is, is, a, is a five minute job. So, I'm going to show you how to do that um, in terms of running the standalone version, but I'm also going to show you how to access report designer through Sage in what I call the standard way. And we're also going to cover off editing a letters email settings, because after all, that's one of the key uh, objectives of today. And yeah, let's crack on. So let's go and edit, well, let's actually browse the report uh, in the system. So we copied the name of the server before, didn't we? We actually uh, found out the server name is this. So I'm gonna copy it to my clipboard. So from here, I'm just gonna go into Windows Explorer, or File Explorer, I keep on using the old traditional approach. So two backslashes. Control V is paste. And if it's a short uh, name or a proper name, what I call a proper name, for example, Sage, then just type that in and enter. You'll actually see Sage. Now that will be called Sage on every site that runs Sage 200. Okay, let's double click. So what you'll find is a series of folders and one folder in particular is of interest for today's session. That's called reporting. So let's go down the list here and double click on reporting. This folder contains the three key folders that Sage will look in when it tries to run a report, a layout, or a letter. And I'll desc describe each one in turn. Remember the structure that starts off the searches for the report under company. It then goes to custom. And then if it still can't find it, it goes to default. Now I haven't explained yet, but default contains all the standard installed versions or documents that are copied to your Sage server when we install Sage for the very first time. Now, you should never change any default documents that are stored in the default location. 
Now, don't get me wrong, you could still use a default report as a base starting document. And that is always my advice when starting off, is use a standard report that's been installed and edit that to customize it. But don't save it back down on top of the standard default report. Because if you ever need to go back to the standard one, one, you can't because you've overwritten it. And secondly, yeah, always leave the default reports as is, general rule. So, as I said before, company, custom, and default. Let's look at co company. Now, for those sites that have all their reports or layouts or letters stored under the company folder, then this will be relevant for yourself. Now, you're going to find out by browsing to your reporting location, as we are doing here, you're going to find out where the documents are stored on your site. So if you are keeping up with my training, and I'll certainly encourage you, if you can, to load up Sage 200 on your machine. And I'll just give you a few moments to do that if you, if you wish. And you may already know, while you're loading up Sage, where or what the name of your Sage server is. In that case, you've got to hit start on the, on the rest of us. Okay, pop into Windows Explorer for me, so if you, if you are following, and browse for your reporting location. So put in the name of the, your uh, file, your fo uh, Sage server. So just like that, enter, double click, and then down to reporting. So hopefully you're up with the stage on that and double click on company. Now, the companies listed in this folder have to be exactly the same name as your Sage company. So remember when you start up Sage, you're presented with a list of companies to log into. That list is the list in the Sage 200 system administration area. Click on the companies tab again and you'll see your list of companies. Now the company name in the left hand column under company name is the name of the folder that I've just shown you in Windows Explorer. Now it needs to be exactly the same name because if it's not, Sage won't find any documents and it will move on to the custom location and then default location if it still can't find the layout or report. So in this example here, I purposely set up a folder called Sage 200C Demo Data. Now, for the purposes of today, I'm using Sage 200's Demo Data, so it's not client specific. And the name of the company is Sage 200C Demo Data. Now, within this folder, you will have three, or could have three subfolders. I have because I wanted to show you uh, the process. I've got a folder in here called layouts. Now in this folder will be any layouts that you've customized. And in my example, there's none. And the reason why is I don't have them stored in this location. Okay. So let's go back one step. Back to this folder here. So letters. I don't have any letters in this folder either because on purpose, I didn't put them there. But if I have a need to have company specific letters or layouts, then obviously I can customize and install them in each company folder. So let's go back into demo data and reports. Now the reports folder has a whole bunch of different subfolders and they're split by the module within Sage 200. Now, if you customize, for example, a VAT report, then that would typically go under the nominal folder. So when Sage runs it, runs the, the VAT report within the system, it will check for this nominal folder, see if there's a report by the same name, and if there is, it will run it instead of the standard report. Again, for the purposes of today, I haven't actually stored them here. So let's go back up to this folder here. So by having a company specific folder 
in this case here, 200C demo data, it allows you to have company specific layouts. In other words, layouts for company one can be different or would be different to layouts for not company number two. Likewise, you can have a different set of la uh, letters for company two. And the same principle applies to reports. So having your documents or customized documents, and by document I mean a layout, a letter or a report, under the company folder, just gives you that flexibility to run very bespoke reports, layouts or letters for each company. Great if you've got a test company situation or you've got very distinct companies with very different branding requirements. In which case, I would tend to recommend to clients you have your layouts under a company folder. But just to be awkward and difficult today, I haven't followed that approach because I don't have any specific branding requirements. Let's go back to the reporting folder just by clicking on reporting at the top of the page. So ignore criteria. I'm not interested in that folder right now. I'm going to click on custom. So custom. I've got a whole bunch of different folders there, but the one I want to point out for today's exercise is the folder, well, three folders actually, called reports, letters, and layouts. These three folders can store your custom layouts, letters, and reports. Now, anything stored in those three locations will print regardless of the company you are logged into. So the key here is use the custom locations, layouts, letters, and reports, only if you are happy to have the same report, layout, or letters to run across any of the companies that you are using. Now, if you've got a test company or a, or a training company, then just be aware if you're using the custom location, you could be potentially printing out a test transaction, a test layout, or a test invoice based on demo data or test data, and it will look exactly like your live documentation. That's sometimes a little bit dangerous. Okay, so just, just be conscious about that. So let's have a look at layouts. Okay, I can see a number of different custom layouts in this folder. And what I've done for today's uh, training exercise as I'm using Experience's default pack of, of layouts. These ones were customized with certain fields, layouts and, and uh, branding la uh, logos. And it's just to sort of make it make the demo a little bit more, um, I guess, polished. So that's the layouts folder. Let's move back to custom. Letters. Letters. Uh, data letters or customer letters. They are credit control letters that you can generate from Sage 200. And these letters uh, will basically follow a set structure and they will be produced with certain text in there saying, please pay. Um, and the next letter, the second one might be a little bit stronger. The third one is a little bit stronger. And the fourth one typically will be the strongest type letter. And that one will typically mention lawyers or solicitors and so forth. So these letters will be, I'll be showing you how to produce those. So it's almost like a bit of a credit control um, uh, uh, training session as well in a way. Um, but these, these letters are quite useful. So anything that is actually a Sage letter, they'll be actually stored in this location. You do not store things like invoices, statements, or any type layout within this folder. Layouts must go under the layouts folder here. Okay. So reports. You remember this folder has lots and lots of uh, folders, subfolders here. Pop, price book, purchase, sales, nominal. Okay, these are any customized reports that you want to run 
that have the same name as the SAGE 200 report. That's typically what I would recommend you use these folders for. Now, some sites we've gone to, they, they, they ask for bespoke SAGE reports that don't have a default or standard version of SAGE. They're ones that we've created specifically for customers' requirements. So in that case, you, sometimes you'll see a subfolder on here with the name of the company, for example, if your name, company name was John Smith Limited, you could have a folder in there and any default, oh, sorry, well, I did not use the word default, any uh, specific customized reports would be in there for that company. So have a look for that uh, folder in your uh, custom reports folder. If you've got one there, then you should be able to find any custom reports in that location. So again, any slight variations or tweaks to standard Sage 200 reports, store them with exactly the same name in the relevant module. So for example, if it's the VAT report that prints at the end of a VAT return in, in Sage, then store it with the same name in this folder called nominal. Good stuff. Okay, I think you're all happy with that. Hopefully you are. If you've got any questions along the way, um, please drop them down, as Simon said, in the chat uh, window, and we'll, uh, we'll certainly do what we can to answer them at, at the end. Okay, so, let's go back to the previous slide. And we've talked about layouts, reports, where they're stored. And I mentioned about the standalone version of Report Designer. Have a chat to our support team if you need that installed, and they'll show you how to do that. Start up Report Designer through Stage 200. So how do I do that? Okay. First of all, launch up Stage 200. And hopefully you're all seasoned Stage 200 experts. Um, basically, launch up Stage 200. You've got the little cog symbol at the top. That looks like a, a cog symbol. And pop in there. And you've got an option here called Run Sage Report Designer. Let's click on there. Right, the first thing I need to point out is that by launching up Sage Report Designer from that company that I'm logged into means that any previews of reports or layouts or letters will be based on the company that I'm logged into. Right. So back again, cog, cog symbol, Sage Report Designer, done. So here is the company, the, the folder structure for reports, company, custom, and default. Remember my Windows Explorer view? Yeah, that looks pretty similar. In fact, that's the same structure. Okay. So I can go into company and I can see my layouts folder. I can see my letters and my reports. Now I've got no customized reports in there. If I go down to custom and go to my layouts folder, let's click on the little plus symbol next to layouts and that will now list all the customized layouts that I've got stored in that folder. So that's actually the same as if I went back to my Windows location, back to Sage, back to reporting, back to custom, layouts, and there we go. Letters. There's my data letter one, two, three, and four. So the key thing is what we said we we're going to show you was how to configure email settings. So what I'm going to use as an example is going to be a data letter. Now, I'm going to pick number one, data letter number one. Double click and it will launch up the letter within the report designer. Let's maximize that uh, window. And on the right hand side, we've got the properties 
uh, window or sub window showing different elements or attributes uh, within this report. Also, really need to show you under view, you've got an option here called properties. So, beg your pardon, the properties of what I was looking at before. Let's just click back on um, Report Explorer. That's actually what I wanted to add as well. So, the Report Explorer shows you a graphical view of how your report is structured. We won't be able to go into too much detail about that uh, today because obviously that's going to uh, take up a bit too much time, but that will show you all the different um, elements or sections within the report. The top, top level is the name of the report, and page one is the top level. Each page has a page header, each page has a page footer, and typically you'll have a detailed section. And depending on the type of report, you'll have a series of headers. Now this header is for a section and a section is just an area within the report. Each section or area has a header and it has a footer. Okay. Now you see when I'm clicking on the uh, headers and footers within the report explorer, you see that it's highlighting the different area within my report designer. Okay, let's just do that again. Okay. So let's just give you a very, very quick high level view of the Report Explorer. Now, let's go and crack into uh, with the email settings. Now, you can access the email settings within a report a number of ways. You can go here, report email settings. Or you can go up to the top level of the um, report and you've got an option here on the right hand side, top right email options and see the little three dots towards the right of that field. Click on the three dots and you see, we'll see the same screen as we saw earlier. Now, setting up the email settings. General rule is do not leave your report if you intend to email a report or a layout or a letter do not leave it set to entire report why if your report includes information that is um, that belongs or shows information from different customers different suppliers different accounts then one person will receive that information so if it's a customer statement you would be sending out all your statements to one customer. Now, I'm sure that you don't really want to do that, and I wouldn't want to see you do it either. So do, do never, never leave that set to entire report. General rule is pick the highest group you can. So I click on the little down arrow next to here, and I'll be picking group number two. Now, group number two, is actually a section within the uh, within the report, and that is is actually to do with customer accounts. And group two, customer accounts, is actually um, showing information for customer account number. So this group is actually splitting the information by customer account number. In other words it will be emailing out or generating the report split by customer account number. So therefore, it makes sense that A, I would pick this as a group, but also bear in mind that I want to pick the highest group setting I can. Now you may need to um, have a play around if it's, <coughs> excuse me, if it's report that you haven't emailed before, um, to, to look at the, the grouping or the, um, the right group to pick. But for a statement or a customer type report like this, then group number two by customer account number is the way to go. So let's pick that. Now, you want this to go to a customer contact. So pick two. And 
I'm going to click on add. So I want to build up. I want to add, build up who or the email address I want to send this letter to. And generally speaking, it's going to be um, SL customers accounts. So click on the little plus, move down to contact email address. Double click on that, that will move that selection over to the window. Click on OK. And now I've specified that contact email address to you. So that email letter will go to that contact email address. Click on OK. Now, subject. I could just type in the overdue letter. Yep, that's great, but that's just going to say overdue letter. Um, you could specify your company name. Or you can build an extra smarts into how that subject name is uh, arrived at. So I can click on subject. And by putting on plus, I can add an additional um, field to this. So it will be dynamically created every time it runs. And I might want to add something else to this uh, subject line. So I could put a date in there. I could put a company name. Um, I could put the name of the customer's account. Let's, let's give, give that a go. And let's go to SL customer's accounts because that's where the information is stored about a customer's account. And I will pick the name field. So let's just make this window a bit bigger and keep going down. And the hardest thing with a report designer is actually knowing where the information is stored and what is customer account name called. It's actually called customer account name, ironically. So double click on that. And there we go. So the subject line will become overdue letter dash space. And then it will add the name of the customer. OK. Click on OK. Done. Now, send the report as attachment with the following message body. In English, that means what, what do you want to type in the email of, of the um, uh, email to the customer? Uh, so that's the standard text. I would tend to say something along the lines of um, maybe dear uh, accounts payable. If this is an overdue letter, this will be going to their accounts payable department. Please find attached. Our overdue letter. Finance. Finish up how you want your um, email body to, to read and attachment format PDF. You've got other options, but typically we recommend PDF. And file name, report description. That will give it the name of whatever you have called your um, data letter. Um, that may not be entirely appropriate, but you can change this and add or change it around. So report description, um, you might actually just have text in here saying overdue letter dash space um, plus and I'm going to add the customer's account name to the file name. So it's the same thing as we did with the email subject line before. So we know that's called customer account name. And let's make that just a little bit bigger. So let's add that done. Okay. Now, this is the thing you need to check with your IT uh, just to make sure that you're using Outlook. And there's a section here called Microsoft Outlook. And typically, that's a lot of what our clients use. So in this case here, I'm assuming that you're using Outlook. And I recommend to save emails to Mailbox. That will give you a draft email, which you can then open up in Outlook, add any personal touches to the email, like how was your last um, trip away? 
Bob, and then just send it off from, from Outlook. If you send it immediately, there is obviously a chance that it may not be right. You might have forgotten to change your letter around. Um, and I think until you get this, uh, this practiced, um, it pays just to save them to the mailbox uh, to begin with. So save to mailbox, yes, and done. So that's our email settings entered. They're only entered for that one letter. Now, obviously I've taken a bit of time to go through how to set them. Typically it won't take you that long to do yourself. You would just simply open up all the uh, letters, for example, and do them one after the other. Okay, don't forget to save your layout down, uh, letter down. So click on the save and that will now save the changes. Super. That's how you change your email settings. If you've got a standalone version of Report Designer installed, and I have just for the purposes of today's uh, training, then you can actually load up Report Designer straight away from the Windows Explorer. So it's just like double clicking a file on your system. So let's just show you how to do that. And I'm going to go to Reporting, Custom, and then uh, Letters. Double click on Report Letter, and it will launch up Report Designer and the letter itself. So that's the advantages of having standalone Report Designer installed. So if you haven't got it installed, if you find it, you go into Windows Explorer and you don't have that little picture symbol next to the name of the um, layout or letter, then the chances are you don't have the standalone uh, Report Designer installed. Have a chat to our support to get um, some help on how to install that. So that's the advantages of standalone Report Designer. Okay, let's pop back to our PowerPoint. And I've shown you how to do, change the email settings, so I think we can put a big tick on that one. And data letters. Now, time-wise, um, what I'm gonna do is let you just have a quick read of this online, because obviously time uh, time's moving on it just a little bit. And um, so basically, I've got all this set up. So uh, if you do need a copy of this PowerPoint uh, at the end, please let us know and we can send one uh, to you. And data letters is just another type of report designer document and very, very useful for generating overdue letters to overdue accounts, customers' accounts. OK, let's actually uh, run those. So back to stage 200. Sales ledger, reports, credit control, and data letters. As I said in the uh, PowerPoint, the data letters work on the aging period set up in your system. And the data letters, as you saw, are preset report designer documents that you can amend. And let's run them off to have a look. When the run the data letters, the standard ones, you'll get these sorts of criteria showing, which you can change. You can actually say, I want to run these letters for balances up to a certain amount or uh, below a certain amount. And I can show letter messages as well. Now, I don't have any set up at the moment, and I'm just going to run these for all balances overdue. Let's click on OK. And the letters will produce if you've got any debts um, that are overdue. And based, it's based on um, uh, outstanding uh, date, and uh, sorry, balance due date. And in this case here, it's pulled up a number of documents. Now, page one or two, obviously this letter, um, we can see that we've got a whole bunch of letters showing, if I minimize them all, each of the four letters will be produced separately. And, each one may have one or two pages, to, or even more, depending on the number of overdue accounts. Now, let's minimize all those. And I want to now show you how to mend the formatting of a field within Report Designer. So let's pick this letter here, I think it's probably 
Looking at the wording of the, um, the text, the language used, I would say it's either number three or number four based on the severity or the warning. So it gives me a bit of a heads up as to what letter this is. And also, to be honest, it tells me at the top of the screen anyway. So debtor letter number four, period four. Okay, say that I want to amend the account number one euro. Okay, and I've got a number of choices how to do that. First of all, I can click on edit at the top. And edit will take me into the report designer. Now, a key important thing to be aware of. What you are editing is not your customized layout, letter or report. It's just the one that the system has actually produced. I'll explain this by example. If I click on File, Save As, it hasn't got a name, it doesn't know what the name is, okay? And yeah, you need to know, ideally you need to go into the letter uh, the proper way. But sometimes I do go in this way uh, if, I, if I have to. If I know, for example, that I've just edited report for letter number four, then I can just obviously click on letter four, level four, and click on save because I know I'm overwriting the correct document. But if you've got any doubts, do not overwrite the current document. Okay, I've just saved here. And it's, do you want to replace it? Yes, I do. And done. Now, how to change a field? Okay. There's lots of things you can do in Report Designer, but changing the formatting of a field is, is pretty straightforward. You click on that field and it will show the properties uh, within this, um, well, properties for this field you've clicked on. So I'm just going to pull the properties pane out a little bit more from the left hand side so the um, go to webinar doesn't cover it up. And I'm just, um, see, I'm clicking on these fields here and it's showing me the properties here on the right hand side. Let's move. That's, that's better. Okay, so let's move up to the top. I've clicked on customer account number. That's the field. And that's what prints out the customer account number on the produced letter. So in here, I've got formatting option on the right hand side here. Click on the right there, see the three dots? Click on the dots and it takes you to the formatting. Is it a short date? Is it, um, is it time formatting? No, neither, neither one of those. Is it uh, a value? Is it, um, do you want to change the maximum decimals or minimum decimals? And any filling, does it, does it need to be padded? So these formatting changes, you would do these typically if you want to limit the number of decimal places that's coming up. Now, obviously with um, the customer account number has no decimals. So I would tend to have this sort of field if it's a number set to zero anyway. This is not a date and time field, so I wouldn't be wanting to set anything in the, with that respect. Click on OK once you've made your changes to the, um, the uh, decimals. If it's a change of formatting, for example, the font, or, or should, I, should I say the text uh, style, then above here, see that little arrow there, if I click on there, that gives me a breakdown of all the different attributes for that text. Is it font number 10? Actually, no, it's, num it's nine for that. So I can just overwrite that and change it here. Tab to get off that field. If you want to take off the bold, at the moment it's set to true, and true means yes, it's bold. So I can double click on this and it changes to false. Double clicking on the here changes it back to true. Now, I could change the alignment. I could change whether it's italic or not italic, but you get the idea. So I've actually um, expanded this out. Just go through that again for you. Click on the left click on the little arrow, left hand side, expand this out, and then you can change the attributes you need to. Now, also, you can left click on the three dots next to uh, text style, and that gets you the uh, all the settings in one place. 
So Arial, 10, bold, underline. No, I don't want underline. Left align, and so forth. I've now changed the formatting and text style of the customer account number on this letter. This is one field of many, and that just gives you a bit of a flavor as to how you can change the formatting. Now, don't forget to save the, uh, the changes when, when you're finished. So click on the little save symbol. And if you need to change some of the text of the letter, then double click on the, um, see the, the little dots around the uh, letter contents? That's a text box. And if you double click on it, it allows you to highlight and change certain uh, text within that. Now, you can also change the text another way. On the left hand side, you've got uh, dynamic help screen. And because I've highlighted that block of text, it shows me what text is showing there, and I can actually change the contents here as well. For some of you, it may be a little bit easier to edit uh, this way. But whatever way you use, the same, same uh, outcome, and you may be wanting to um, uh, change the text here. So, uh, incurred cost, I don't know who spelled incurred, that way, but I would spell it like that. So once you've made your change to the text, then you can click off the, um, the field, which is a text box, and that change is now taken. Again, don't forget to click on the little save button here and save the changes down on the screen. Okay. Um, other things to be aware of, um, just at a very high level, you can um, move fields around. So for example, if I wanted to move customer account number just to the right, just a little, little bit, then click on the field, left click on the field, use your arrow, right arrow button, and just click it a few times and you can move it over. Now, if you're like me and, and once you get into report designer, it sort of becomes a little bit addictive. Is that you look at the go look at the layout or the report or letter you go actually no it's not quite aligned so you want the things to look good uh, because this is what's sent to the customer then obviously highlight the fields and this is how you, you align things up in the right way so left click on the first field keep your finger down on the control button on your uh, keyboard left click on the second field that's now clicked well, I've selected two fields, then go up to format at the top of the page screen, alignment, and top. That means it will align the fields. Make sure the top of the fields are perfectly aligned for you. Done. So that is alignment. Very, very useful in making sure things look good. So Let's left click on there again, move that over just a little bit. Save that down, done. So now I've now completed my changes. Let's close my letter down and let's run off those letters. Today was about email, uh, emailing or report design techniques and we've changed the email settings. It'd be a little bit wrong of me not to show you the emailing uh, in, 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 in practice. So let's give it a, give it a whirl. So let's generate the letters. You generate them to screen first, okay? Have a look at them, make sure they look correct, they have the right text, there's no spelling, there's no typos, that type of thing. Now, if you are happy with the contents of the letter, then you can actually click on email. Now, this is a very good error. Very good error in the respect that for training, you should never see this when running off an uh, email report. As I said before, you do not want to send the entire report to one customer. So this is a very good training uh, error to encounter because then I can show you how to fix that. But do, ne if, do never, never run a report or email something out if you see this error. So click on no. So I'm gonna fix this problem. 
this is data letter uh, four that has this error. So I'm going to click on um, edit. Report email settings. So report email settings. Entire report, pick group number two, it's split by customer account number, which is correct. So each customer is going to be sent their own individual email, which is what I would what I would want. Subject, I'm just going to type in a very brief note here because obviously time is limited. I'm just going to set this to Outlook and that's a very basic email setting entered. Plus, I should actually change this text. Click on OK, done. File, save as. That's number four, save. OK, let's try an email again. Oh, I've got a problem with number three. Again, very good training error. Um, I don't want to email the entire report, big no-no. So click on no, and I'm just going to go and click on edit. Now, by the way, the letter number is number three. So edit, report email settings, group number two, and this group splitting SL customer account. So customer account, customer account number. That means every uh, customer is going to be emailed separately, which is what I want. And you typically go for the highest group number anyway. So that's fine. Subject, let's say I've actually entered my correct subject uh, in here. And again, you could customize it and, and produce this dynamically. Just for speed, I'm just typing the, that information in. Outlook, OK. Let's save that down. So file save as. And this is data letter number three. And select save and replace yes. Let's try emailing again. Oh, got a problem again. I don't want to email the whole thing, so click on no. And I'm going to go back into edit. Now, by the way, it's letter number two. So by the end of this training session, you'll definitely be familiar with how to uh, create your, um, or enter your email settings. And if you're ever unsure what group to pick, always go for the highest group and just make sure that the split customer account number means that no one's going to receive any wrong information. Okay, so let's save that down. That's actually letter number two. So, what do you reckon? Do you think we've actually nailed the complete? Um, email settings now, or I think possibly we have. So let's run it again. Let's, uh, in this case, accept all the standard settings or criteria. Super. And it'll only take a few minutes to, uh, moments to run. And let's click on email. Hmm. So something's not quite right, is it? So let's have a look at that. Uh, send the entire report as attachment. Uh, no, and that's the letter number four. Now, this is a good exercise. We've actually changed the settings. And in this case here, I actually need to log out of Sage. Sage will, um, what we call cache, or uh, obtain all the settings when it starts up. And because I've changed things like um, the reports, um, email settings, you really need it to start from scratch again. So I'm just going to close Sage down and let's rerun Sage. And I'm going to close down Report Designer as well. So let's go back to our sales ledger letters. Let's run them and let's email them. And I did get that error message before and that's a no-no, I should never click on entire report. But in this case here, I'm just gonna show you the emailing. Um, click on okay. 
And basically, let's have a look at Outlook. So what the system will do is generate a draft email. Now they will be stored in your drafts folder. So let's just have a look at Outlook for a moment. And typically you would go into your drafts folder and obtain your email document from there. So what I'm gonna do is show you, let's pick up a, um, let's pick up letter number one. And I'm just gonna email this one individually. So click on email. And that's basically taken the email settings from your contact. And it's produced a draft email. And that draft email looks like that. So you've got your email address from the contact and overdue letter, better kitchens. And it's got the letter, obviously you want a bit more informative text in there than that. But the overdue letter is a PDF. And there we go. So that is how it stores or stored as a draft. You just go in there and tweak um, the uh, information. Now, what I'd recommend you do is make sure you don't have the standard default um, report designer text on there. And let's actually have a look at that. Um, uh, letter. Browsing back to my Sage folder, so back to the server name, Sage, reporting, and custom, letter, and letter number one. Report, email settings, and that looks fine. And the text, dear accounts payable, dot, 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 and there we go. That setting there, save your master mailbox, that's what's getting it to store it in the drafts folder in Outlook. So let's just preview that. I'm just going to click on preview button in the bottom right hand corner. Click on OK. There's my uh, draft letter. And emailing actually is not an option when you preview the report. So I'm actually going to have to go back to edit mode, so click on the little pencil mark, bottom right hand corner, save my changes down, and run it from Sage. So let's run it again, data letters, okay, and I want to email off the Euro trading letter here. So I'm going to, from this previewed letter, click on email, and it's still complaining that the settings are not right, so I'd have to have another look at that. Um, but I'm just click on no. Um, period four, Simon, you need to go to yeah. the letter period one. Yeah, this is actually four, isn't it? So let's yeah. go back to the four mark. Um, so I'm just going to go back to so Sage reporting, custom letters, and number four. Thought I changed it before. Obviously, I haven't. So let's go back into uh, report email settings, and that's actually set. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so it shouldn't actually ask you, uh, shouldn't come up with that warning because I actually have changed the individual report. And I'm just going to run those again. And 
pick number four and email this letter. Still wants to say it's not configured. Well, this actually is configured. Um, Due to the constraints of time, let's uh, do you want yeah. to do an addendum to this and just say what the uh, what the issue is with that particular. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. Hopefully, we've uh, we've given you an idea of how to set up the email settings and uh, where to find the right reports and which level to go in and so on. Uh, if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to pop those up now, and uh, we'll certainly try and answer those. And uh, I popped up on the chat window, but I forgot to mention up the start we can send a record. We will send a recording uh, of this session out to you guys, uh, so you can sort of recover. Uh, what what we've gone through today and can also make the PowerPoint available as well. But as I say, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to answer them now and uh, or ask them now, sorry, and we will certainly try and answer them if we can. It looks like uh, possibly there are questions coming through and I'm um, slightly conscious that we've overrun slightly. So uh, any questions do come up, as they feel free to drop me an email, myself or Simon an email, and we'll uh, certainly answer those there there and then. But uh, yeah, thank you all for attending today. We really appreciate you all taking the time. Uh, we're going to send out a uh, just a Microsoft form afterwards, just asking for some feedback on the session. It'd be great if you could spend a couple of moments just answering a couple of quick questions about uh, the session. It just helps us shape the future sessions we're going to do. So the more feedback you can provide. Oh, I've just got one question come through. Um, is the ability to do what we have been just shown impacted by where Sage is stored? Uh, no, no, it's. Um... Even if you're accessing Sage Report Designer through Sage, um, you can still carry out the changes. I think just for clarity on that, I believe Mark is using Sage 200 uh, online, the hosted version. Um, uh, right, okay, right. But I think you can still set up all the email settings and such for the hosted version as well, as far as I'm aware. Is that correct, Simon? To be honest, I haven't actually looked at that area before, to be honest, I'd have to have a look at it and come back to you on that. We'll confirm that. I'm, I'm fairly confident you can and there's no issues and you can follow the same path. Um, uh, yeah, so we we'll answer the question. So yeah, no, I'm pretty sure you can do. We will just confirm that by email. So we'll just check with, uh, with the colleagues a bit of a whiz on the online version and just confirm that, Mark. But uh, yeah, I think you can basically do everything you've just seen today. Jolly good. Okay, thank you guys. I really appreciate you all taking the time. I know it's a Monday morning, but it's uh, is appreciated. I'll pop out that um, feedback form and say if you can to spare a couple of moments to, to give a bit of feedback, that'd be much appreciated and we will send the recording to follow. But any questions, obviously you've covered quite a few areas today. Um, we'll also just feedback what the issue is with that letter for, just so, so for clarity, just so we know, well, I'm sure it'll be something or nothing, but uh, we'll, we'll confirm that. But yeah, thank you again, guys. We appreciate you all taking the time and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and week. Thanks all.